Series E. Series E. Series E. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Series E. Series E. Apex Legends. Series E. Apex Legends starts right now. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second week of qualifiers here at Series E. I'm Jet Set Jamerson, joined once again by Tom T Squared Taylor. And now we are moving on to week two of qualifiers, like I said. And Tom, how excited are you for this week of qualifiers? Yeah, last week was absolutely insane. We're already into game number one, and we already have some death, Jamerson. Ooh, boy. And this is where we saw a lot of fighting going on last week as well. And so let's go ahead and head into game number one of Series E. As it looks like this is not a great start. Stay naughty. Uh, one of the champions from last week. But of course, changing up rosters, playing with the Niles, playing with Arcan, but not right now. As they got the scan on the full squad, Beast of the Hunt will be popped now. And so. We'll have a chance to go ahead and throw down another one if he so pleases. It's going to be Pride going with the front line. He's got the Mastiff out. Backs up into cover so he doesn't actually overexpose himself. I like how he's playing this. It's very measured now as he throws in that Thermite, gets the connect, and now they're charging forward, connecting with it. The Mastiff are going to be able to take out two, finish off the squad. That's going to be a plus three for Team Solo Fide. Burger Boy just completely dominating in his first team fight on the new squad that's always a good feeling when you get into this first team fight with your squad at the tournament and you just completely steamroll over them gives you so much confidence going forward charging up their evo shields on the way gathering up more resources and very methodically played by pride like you said just shimmying behind the rock not taking much damage but the clamor up to the top of the rock mixed with the thermite and the gibraltar bubble is really what did it all players charging at the same time Nice battery hit by Clarify as they go and push with the Beast of the Hunt. So a very clean team fight to open this up. And they are pinned down just a little bit, but these are the map changes that I love to see. Nice crack with uh, that nade out, but it looks like on the other side, it's Team ERG just ready to back up off of this. They don't want to take place in that fight. They just want to go ahead and find that position in the middle of the zone as they back off to survey. And so Dirty Dan will be able to lay claim to the tunnels here just east of skyhook and what's interesting jamerson is this the first composition that we've seen without gibraltar when you're rocking the bloodhound this is going to be a watson instead by protectful so not as much team fighting power but you do have more ability to have this aoe control as protectful is trying to do that generator got blown up absolutely immediately so very unfortunate for them and not able to do as much as he wanted to, but it is down, and so this is their opportunity. Hitting for Flesh, almost taking out that Gibraltar, but it's going to be Burger Boy charging forward now as Solofide will continue this push onto the three-man squad. No, no knocks quite yet, as we do have all the doors covered. Oh, the Gibraltar jumps up over the top, but two shots coming out from that Mastiff, gets the knock. He tries to retreat with the reload on that Prowler. He's not going to be able to instantly get it, but... It's going to be Z Davis to go down now. We saw the Wraith just going on over to the Caravan. He's getting hunted down. We'll see how long he can stay alive for as it looks like Pride will finish this off. And Sola Fide, they learned their lesson, right? They have to continue, continue to put up points, especially here in the early and mid game. The power of the burger. You're right. And that's what the problem was with Team Zero Tricky last week where they got the back-to-back -back wins, but... I think they only had 31 points, if my mind serves me correctly, with the two dubs, which means around five kills each there. So it's not much, and we're already seeing six kills on the board for Solo Fide. So the power of the burger and Clarify looking really good so far. But if you're one of these Watson teams right now, if you don't have this Gibraltar, if you don't have this Bloodhound, you should be in Skyhook setting up and getting inside. But that's why you're seeing all these other teams with different team compositions, mainly these Gibraltar Bloodhounds out here skirmishing on the outside. But it's going to be a very, very interesting pull here, Jamerson. It looks like it came to the opposite side. Yeah, it's looking like it's that very same circle the way that we closed out last week. 
And now we're going to be starting it off once again. We do have the aggressive bubble coming out as Crummy will go down. THT doing a great job of gatekeeping here, but as one jumps over the top, I'm taking a little bit too much damage. I have to back off and try to reset here, but Tempest will be able to get the pick on to Matt Pickett. Rakanisha only answers with one. They should be able to recover this. We'll see if Hill is going to have uh, that um, dome up, but no, instead he's just going to go for the res, bring him right back into this. And so, yeah, teams, they know and understand how important that early aggression is. And speaking of early aggression, it looks like one of the things that helped them out in that team fight was that BFF here. Batteries, though. So it looks like they're going to have to take this fight fairly quickly. That's exactly what they're doing, Jamerson, pushing in because they're low on resources. They've already got two knocks as well. They'll be able to get that armor swap on to the purple, which already has 218. As Zara Tricky will be able to finish off one as well. There should just be a solo out now as Skyhook is just jam packed with action right now. Aim assist not OP. Looking to reset here as uh, Dracos is going to get handed off that Phoenix kit. They'll be able to go ahead and pop that one off. We'll see if the team can hold them down. Looks like no team's quite ready to pull the trigger here on a fight on Skyhook. Just a lot of poking and prodding. But speaking of a fight that should be breaking out soon, never mind. They'll just go ahead and sidestep that gatekeep that was coming up. Probably from THT. They're going to move up and join the other squads over at Skyhook. Nice triple take shots here from Mercy doing about 100 damage overall. No scope on this Prowler, but this is what we're talking about with these map changes here. Jamerson, if this was the previous map in Season 5, they would be absolute toast, but they're able to strafe Bob and Weave over here, over on the train area. But it's tough because you have to push one of these teams out. Which way are you going to be able to go? Are you just going to have to bully these guys? And is there another team behind them? So it's a tough spot here to be, but it would be a lot tougher if this was Season 5 as they are safe for now, but... They will have to take that 3v3 fairly soon, but all gold armors here for THG. And another good looking team fight. Look at these shots from Hill. Yeah, and you have to understand that Hills is also taking a lot of damage with that arm shield. And so he's just winning out the trade handily for now. But as I say, that teenage will go down. Hill with almost no HP. Tempest with almost no HP. They clean that up, and that's going to be Petty Boss, Bowser, and Mini going down here before we even hit the top 10. Quick scan out from Tempest to make sure that their flank is clear as they understood that they were gatekeeping a team to the south. Don't need to worry about that threat. Worry about threats coming in from the north. A very, very solid team that they just took out. Former ALGS winner in the summer circuit, Bowser, who's on the team with six and nice wig. Now a different squad and it was so close. Petty Boss almost pulled it off there with the two versus one. I think maybe about 40 HP on both of these players, but just not quite enough. And it was great initial damage there with not only the Mastiff, but all players charging in at the same time. But here it is, Jamerson. More action over here towards the rotate on this Skyhook side. The Mastiff is just so powerful right now. Yeah. Bird doing so much damage now. It's going to be two teams, uh, excuse me, two players approaching from the stairs side. Instead, they go ahead and regain uh, roof control here as they do have that Watson generator to help them natty heal this one up. But they don't have much time to try and heal this up now as the zone will be closing fairly shortly. Back on board with Zero Tricky, who got into the fight with a different squad. It's going to be TSS as uh, Kiyun was able to get the knock, but the Gibraltar res was there for them. And what a rat spot. Just watching out here, Zero Tricky will get wiped up going to be Rambo picking up two kills for his squad there and finally Dirty Dan are able to find the kills there but it's another squad coming in Hill THT coming in to punish them with the third party Rambo slides right on in and Hill will be able to finish them off and it's all up to Kovsky here to try and rat this one out but like you said Tom with all of the bloodhounds in play how do you rat you really can't, but THT is looking so strong right now in this lobby. The crazy thing is, Jamerson, when we talk about the favorites, most of these favorites have been wiped out already with powerful team fights coming in from both sides. But it's going to be Stuny Bird and the rest of his guys going down to the zone. We see a Pathfinder. He's going to go as well, but look who's set up waiting for all these players to make the rotation. It's going to be THT Teen with the Thermite cutting players off. All these guys are just down to the zone. These are free kills here for these guys. 
and they're just continuing to rack up all of the points. This is so good for them, continuing to rock the gold armors as well, picking up so many resources on the way. Now all these teams that are camping inside the tunnel, they can hold out. And we'll see how they play this one. Are they going to rotate extremely late? Is that going to be the play? Or are they going to maybe try to get into position early and bully teams off of the spot? Yeah, Solafide doing a great job of controlling the high ground over uh, by what's left of uh, uh, of survey as Kovsky does get finished off. And so now we're get left with three squads left of trios here. And so it's going to be a 3v3v3. It's all up to Solafide to try their best to slow down both squads who are not in the ring quite yet. Muffins doing a great job of holding the north hand side, making sure that no one escapes from here with that charge rifle. And then, of course, you got to imagine you got two other players watching to the south as well. And so this holding pattern, it's going to be so difficult to break, especially with how Muffins is playing this head glitch. I feel like that charge rifle should have hit for a little bit more. Didn't it look good? And then all of a sudden you see it pop up and it says 24. That's more like it hitting the red 69 nice. there. And then still just bullying, like you said, on both sides. Very solid gun choices here coming in for the Solafide squad. But it's going to come down to THT with multiple setups over here, multiple armors to swap. But Muffin's going to open it up. With the big Gibraltar defensive bombardment, that's going to make other players use their bubble. That's exactly what happens. And now that means that you can use your bubble last, and that's key in these Gibraltar dome fights. And they already have their route planned out. It's looking really good for Solafide. Yeah, Solafide, you already saw they also swam, have three armor swaps at the ready. Two blues and a purple set up in their little nest egg there. So we have another defensive bombardment coming on out now. It's going to be Muffin throwing in the nade here. Solafide with the high ground. THT finishing off TSS. And uh, it doesn't look like there were any trades. So it's going to be a full 3v3 here. Back coming out for Pride. They're going to have to go for the peaks themselves. So this is a dangerous position. As the scan comes out, they know exactly where they are. But we'll see if Clarify has his own now. Goes Ooh. for the jump peak. It's for 88. He's going to change it up now. Swing on over to the right-hand side. Try to get the flank on them now. They don't have the scan quite yet as the bubble is used by Muffins here, but Pride just overextends. He goes down McCarthy. Muffins will go down next. And now it's all to Clarify in a 1v3. No, it's a 1v2 here, but he's not wow. going to be able to finish it off. And wow, what a finish. What a game from THC. They just start off and finish so strong throughout that. Those are the two teams with the most kills throughout the game. So it was going to be an extremely explosive fight. We're going to head into game number two here as uh, we're on board with THT, our winners of game number one. And uh, we didn't get to see them early on, but it looks like uh, they do have, well, they've got Sorting Factory. going to be Yubin and the Snickerdoodle squad fighting over at Old Survey Camp, which is not very good loot. So here's the epic battle that is just going to continue for on and oh. on and on over here. But looks like RKN may have the upper hand here. We'll see. Yeah, it's Blurs in a 2v1 as the Thirst do come out. Kion gets finished off. Zaniles was taken out as well. There we go. His Watson goes down. So the 1v2, we'll see if uh, they're able to hunt down the last remaining member here. Remember, they do have the Bloodhound. They can try and scan him out to figure out where it is. But hey, as far as 50-50 goes, it's still living up to its name. or one for one so far, unless Blur... Once again, comes up a huge clutch for his team like he did multiple times last week. We've seen it happen, but this could easily be three versus one. If they hit that res on his denial here very shortly, you could see multiple beacons that they could use, one directly in front of them. And they could use that res to take away the res from Blur and his team, or they could use it to bait out where the last player is. So they're going to go and toss a bubble down go and grab the loot there for Naughty since he's on control, or I believe, since he's standing still, and then they're going to go and make their way over here and slowly try to find exactly where this player is, but here's a very important fight for the Frog team, but it's going to be Rambo taking down Petty Boss to start. Great scout shots here from Bowser. Yeah, he tried his best, but Bowser does cover him for now as Mini gets a knock himself, and so they've got the man advantage. They'll Geyser is one of those spots where you could pick up kills while you're in the middle, but Back to Rakanishu, Pickett, and Crummy. It's you like that mate getting in 
to the fight that we saw them start over before THC got their kills, but a nice offensive Bud Barmet coming from the enemy team, a great bubble, is only going to take off a little bit of his health as they have to reset and try to find out exactly how many teams are in the vicinity. You don't want to go all out on this one and give up your building and get third party from behind and just lose your positioning here because they will be the gatekeepers of this entire side, Jamerson. They can slowly work their way down that hill, have the high ground the entire time, and then hold the crates over towards the right side of the geyser, which sometimes where is where that zone ends specifically. So I'm currently fighting within um, geyser, making a push from building to building can be absolutely deadly. And yes, it is Solafide up top as the dome was used early on. Mercy only is the one to get the knock onto Burger Boy. RKN knocking out Blur as we see the kill feed there. Muffins trying his best to dodge and weave, but he cannot. And it's going to be Solafide getting knocked out early here. Not uh, just making it into the top 15. Avoiding a lot of what's going on in No Name and trying to make a beeline for uh, the cave if they possibly can. Catching one out, you cannot be out crafting there, yo yo. As he's gonna get finished off, Zero Tricky picking up one more kill for his team. That's the instant thirst, and he's gonna be able to fill up on the rest of his utility. A nice little bit of cover to work with as well as Gobble will be able to finish off Zeniles, but it looks like Yo Yo's squad mates might get finished off very shortly. Scan coming out from Zero Tricky spots out two inside the tunnel. It's a full three man squad, Ooh. but oh, that's what I'm talking about. Zero Tricky with the 301 doing so much damage now. They're gonna go ahead and toss in the nade, but the uh, Watson generator eats all of that up, tries to slide in. The Q just in time to avoid lethal damage, but the charge coming out from Zara Tricky. I am loving this aggression coming out from Zara Tricky right now, as it looks like he might just be able to get another knock. No, they slow things down as they get scanned from behind. And what a great job of just pivoting and swiveling here as they get one for one. Naughty knocks out Mercy, but it looks like Zara Tricky might be able to clutch this out for the team as the bubble is there. Hits for an 88. Another 88 misses that third one, but he's done so much for his squad. But now they're getting sandwiched, and it looks like they bit off more than they can chew. They will wow. get finished off, but they go down in guns of glory here. The fight's not over yet, though, as BFF come in for that uh, uh basically carrying loot now the squad on the other side of this door what a fight and it just goes to show you could be one of the best team fightings here in the lobby and it doesn't matter when you get pinched from multiple sides two three four teams inside of that area going over towards the geyser and a great job by the observing team grabbing all of that action there didn't miss any single bit of it but we know where this zone was pulling and we know who's in position. It's our team that won the previous game, but we're looking at minions, stink Casellos over here trying to stay alive as this thermite's burning right in front of them. And a little bit of a door game going down. Usually the one that kicks the door is the guy that dies, but stink with a nice little crouch strafe and the great shots, not able to connect. Finally able to take down prideful and get the kills. Casellos now is your kill leader there with four Jamerson. Yeah, but they need to get moving. They need to go ahead and recover quickly here as the zone's going to start closing in now. They do have the medkits to uh, pop, and so that's not going to slow them down, trying to heal with syringes. And uh, you know what? The zone's actually moving a little bit slower than I thought it would. On board with aim assist and not OP as we are here in the final nine squads. They already used that dome as Bambino is going to need to heal up now as all of them on stupidly low HP. Petty Boss tries to throw a nade, but his own Watson generator is gonna go ahead and eat that one up. Sets up the crossfire from the right-hand side as Bambino goes down to a different squad. As now they charge forward, they can't let these kills get away from them. And how many did they pick up? It looks like Mini was able to pick up two. Bowser picks up one more as well. Back on board with THT. Not entirely too sure how many kills they have right now, but oh, that's a lot sitting in front of them. That's a huge third wow. bite. That's a bonfire. Hill. Wow. Just really doing it to them right now as Teen tries to cut off that door with that portal. It might be a little short. They might be able to just eek on pass if they really wanted to. They're going to get aggressive on the players underneath them, though. That's going to be Casellos. Keep in mind, that's a team of two, so smart play over here but teen has to be careful you know that that player is shooting you in the back but all players here extremely healthy again 
great armors as they had previously. They've been setting up doing damage here in the back for quite some time. But here's the big play here. 30 seconds. This is where the aggression's coming in. They have armor swaps inside. Who's going to be able to help Hill? Well, he does have the massive train on the door. And so anyone that tries to peek, take a lot of damage. Now it's Teen that gets peeked and he gets knocked. Tempest is going to be sung to take him out. GS Bird finds one more. We'll see if Tempest can clutch this one out. He's got Beast of the Hunt Rocket, and he will be able to finish off the squad. Goes for that instant res, and he's got 10 seconds. He'll be able to get one up. We'll see if he can get Teen in time. I don't think so, as they need to Gibraltar go Gibraltar Bubble the heals. Red. They do have the Gibraltar Bubble, but he went for the bat first, and now he's going to go for the res onto Teen. Will they have time to completely stabilize, though, Tom? It looks like they're going to be able to. I think that he's going to be able to pop a couple cells here. This zone is going to move fairly slow. Huge plays from Tempest winning that one, but the bubble is going to be down, Jamerson, for this rotation. So they have to just wait last second here, move in with the zone, and pray that Hill is going to have that bubble back up by the time that they push in behind this rock. It's five squads left as they have to climb on over the zone, just ending right there. But Team gets the first knock, Tempest gets a second onto Blighty. As we're watching, you like that, mate. Apparently, just watching all the kills go into the hands of THT. If you're in this lobby, you need to stop them right now. You cannot allow them to have another massive game as Hill will find one more kill onto Farmer Lucas. And here we go. This is what I'm talking about. You need to get aggressive onto the team. Hill goes down. Crummy will pick up Tempest. And just like that, THT are knocked out in the top three, but they have so many points under their belts. Now it's the final two squads remaining here. Just one player left, and it looks like they will be able to finish that off. And so this is the cumulative scores overall over the last two weeks, Tom. Yeah, so if you're in the top five, you have to be feeling good. That has to give you confidence going forward, maybe an extra push going into game three. And if you're if you're not quite there yet, maybe a team like Solafide who feels like they could easily bounce back, maybe they'll come back here with a strong number game three too. But again, Zara Tricky, they had such a great week one that it doesn't matter what happened here in week two so far. They just need to continue to play how we know they can, and I'm sure they're going to be able to bounce back strong. But what a battle we're going to have over here towards the rest of the area because I think THT and Zara Tricky are a safe bet at this point. You like that, mate? A big win for them right there. After that, you're not really quite sure what's going to happen. All right, and so it looks like game number three. We saw a lot of funneling over to the north, and Flo Rida <laughs> getting into another fight once again with TSS. Oh, this is great. It's so consistent every single time. These teams don't back down. They don't care if it's a 50-50. His Watson... Never seen him back down from a fight in my life. We'll see if they can win this one. It's going to be a one versus one, I believe, as Blur is going to drop to Arcan. But I think there's still a little bit of sliver left. It help that he does pull it off. RKN with the big team fight. The saga continues. Some decent loot for them so far. They would like to get a better armor onto Pride, though. Back on board with ERG, excuse me, now as uh, Oso rated. Are gonna get the knock onto you, Ben. And so this is just a third party coming in. Z Davis gonna go ahead and corral them on in from the other side as they'll be able to finish that one off. Instantly pop the Phoenix, go for the reset because did we make it though, Tom? As uh, they're still in this fight. They really are. I think our observers smashed a couple Rockstar energy drinks before work today because they have not missed a fight yet. Shout out to those guys killing it in the back Hashtag but this is another hard. fight are you kidding me a fourth team is going to go down here within the first zone before it even closes so it has the smoke settles trying to continue to hunt this squad down another fight breaking out though in the connector area between harvester and, uh, down. and thorny factory and yeah tht just trading back and forth and tht do go down early on and another squad goes down 12 squads remaining urw though pushing on up and uh you got to be careful in this position as 
The defensive bombardment's gonna come out, they'll back off. Inspiring Moose does need to heal up, and instead he charges forward with that bat. It is, of course, his own defensive bombardment, so he only gets slowed down, takes no damage. As now they are setting up to breach and clear. Here comes the scan, they're set up in the corner. Massive out, only hitting for 14. Ooh. That's a 112! They smell blood in the water, they want to finish this Big off. Nade. Here comes a nade from Inspiring Moose. We'll see if it gets a knock, and it will onto Gobble. They charge forward off the back of the knock. Flesh hits, and they will be able to finish off Yogo Stomp. An inspiring Moose in the URW squad taking out a couple of good teams. Speaking of good teams, we're on board with Zara Tricky. Looks like they're taking on Naughty and his squad, but we'll see who's going to be able to take this one down. I think it's a two versus one situation. It is going to be Team Zara Tricky with another team fight, getting the res over here over towards the train side. And you don't have to really leave the high ground here, Jamerson. They can just continue to own this spot. But Inspiring Moose did drop down, so I want to see him try to get back up and work because you do have the teams behind them they have to worry about. Yeah, exactly. Just as you say that, the Pega Aim taking a lot of damage, and he needs to try and stay up here for his team to slow down the team that's up top right now. That's going to be Matt Pickett, Crummy, and Rakanushi. We saw uh, just a moment earlier, Matt Pickett with a triple take, picking up two kills. Don't know if he was able to get the thirst. URW trying to finish this fight off as quickly as possible as we know that Matt Pickett's team is right up top, ready to try and jump down. They cannot trade. They have to do this clean at this point. Or not even take too much damage, but talking oh. about too much damage, Murdoch goes down. They're not trading quite yet. There it is, as they get strictly, but that's going to be Matt Pickett's team coming in very soon to try and finish this all off. Inspiring Moose will be able to clean up this fight, but will he be able to get the res? Where is the punish from the other squad? Wow, it's a portal play coming in from Crummy. The timing should be there right as they're getting the reses, which means that he could pick up the kills on the ground too, but instead it's going to be two players that are up and pick it slate to the party here. You have Papega Aim getting the knocks. If they get the thirst, that's going to be tough for them. You do have the last player coming in here. Excuse me, second player coming in. Papega Aim trying to hold them off. And now you have the bait and switch coming in with Pickett. But again, this is risky. You don't want this to continue to elongate. And they're going to play it safe back off and hit a res. Interesting. Backs away. The high ground rocks now as uh, he tries to find a decent headshot to work with the arm shield, soaking up a lot of damage for him now. Good shots. Hitting there with the triple take, but the defensive bombardment comes down. He doesn't have the wow. double ape. Are getting cleaned up now. Dracos will go down. Bambino is trying to hold the line for his team, but no, it's not going to be enough. He's just running away. Never mind. With his tail tucked between his legs. Uh, that Bloodhound is the only one surviving for his squad. We're now down to eight squads, 19 players. Make that seven squads, 17 players. As Zara Tricky will clean that one up. In the meantime, Matt Pickett got knocked here. Don't know exactly by whom, but it's going to be Rakanishu. Oh, it's Sola Fide coming on in, cleaning them up. That Peacekeeper doing so much work for Pride. So it's not just you as... We do have a couple rats in this one. Surprised that they're lasting so long, Jamerson, but they'll be gone soon. Lone Bloodhound coming in, trying to live his best life. We're gonna be a He got top here. five. Yeah, hey, top five is a good job, but you know, this zone's moving in 15 seconds, and those teams that are over towards the left are pinched. Blighty over here already taking damage. It's gonna be difficult here without the Gibraltar. Fat Fruit Ninja in the open here on this Watson. He's going to have to lay down a gen and maybe start fencing some area off. But the teams with the bubble are going to have the advantage here as they start to push in and make this circle rotation. We'll see if they look on over. Stink still trying his best to keep this alive. Not actually getting scanned up there as Farmer Lucas taking so much damage. And that is the raid Q animation taking way too long. They go down. It's all up to Fat Fruit Ninja. And it looks like Stink gets top four for his team. He's ratting it out. How much longer can he survive here? It's just full squads remaining along with Stink. As he tries his best, finally goes down, and now we're left with three squads. Mr. Hacula pushing forward. Mercy only already got a knock onto Mini, onto Bowser. Petty Boss answers back finally for the squad, but it's Sola Fide now to clean this all up. They know the trades are there. This is their game to win. They spot him out, the bat just in time, but he might already be cracked at this point. There we go. Pride gets the knock. And it's all cleanup duty at this point for them. 
It's about finishing this off strong. It's about finishing this off cleanly and not making any mistakes because this is all Sola Fide. Yeah, great job by Sola Fide. Here we go. Game number four for Series E, week two of qualifiers. This fight for now, they're still sticking around. So we'll see. RKN and stay Nani. It's going to be RKN up on the high ground, but his arm shield's broken now. As uh, we have another fight breaking out as well over by Survey. SDA. Oh, scissors. Oh, boy. Yep. Yep. It's all over. Also, by the way. Over those banners, but I think he's just going to dip out, reset, and see how many placement points he can get as we're taking a look at THT fighting over here on the Sorting Factory side. Armor advantage over to the other squad, but still getting aggressive on the side of the THT team. They have all players together here. Great armor situation. They should have better the high ground as they should. Very safe play. Finding that 2x on the way is pretty solid too, but it's going to be Petty Boss getting a knock here. Hopeful goes down, and in this 2 versus 3 situation, it should be easy for these guys. Clean shots with the flat line, and they're wiping this one for sure. Off another team. Here we go. THT now committing on to a fight. They've got a team backed up into a corner as Hill is trying to get the angle. Teenage. Get aggressive. Take other people's loot. Let them loot for you tends to be some of the best strategies as we're looking at a fight happening over towards the Overlook side now. They've already got the knock and they are going to go ahead and push up. That Fru Ninja will get instantly thirsted. It's a 2v3. Their squad that's laying down cover fire. Is the other team going to charge into his bubble though? Because that's going to create an all-out brawl here into the snake. They do. And now they just have to use the boxes back and forth. Hill, can he hit an armor swap? He does. Surprise those armor swaps were on the ground. It's going to be Petty's team. The massive shot's coming in. It's now up to team. We are on board with Didn't We Make It. They have a team to their north and to their south. We saw a scan coming out from I'm Sung as he's continuing to scan behind them. That's why there's a team right behind them. He needs to pop this bat. They need to buy some time. And it looks like he will be able to get it off as he's going to pop that beast of the hunt. Now ready to fight with that bolt in hand. He swings right, but Bird has taken so much damage. I'm Sung will end. Answer back though, and that's gonna put a stop to this push as he gets the knock on to Mini. Petty Boss is gone, and there's only one left. Bowser, will he be able to clutch this up? He has about 15 HP. He gets the knock on to Sung, but he gets finished off. And oh boy, that was clutch coming out from I'm Sung. Great flank by I'm um, Sung. Just coming out from both sides. Gartho swinging on in. Didn't get the quite proper trajectory he wanted, and so he stopped a little bit short as bubbles are out from both squads. I think the aggressive one was the one that came out later, though. Haculo! Oh, boy. Zara Tricky getting that first knock on to Z Davis. Will they be able to clean this one up? Girth goes down. Zara Tricky turns around. Almost cracks one. There we go. They'll be able to finish that one off, and Zara Tricky will survive for now. Solafide, though. They're trying to control the north hand side, but the defensive bombardment comes out as Pride has to back away. Muffins, along with Clarify, are inside the building, though, so Only they are one safe cell. for now. And yeah, his economy is so low here. They need to get these kills, as uh, we do have the EMP coming on out. It connects. Pride once again with that PK. They've got the bubble down and the knock on some mercy only. And Zara Tricky not leaving themselves much time at all. They are going to get punished here as mercy only gets finished off by Strictly. Zara Tricky is the next to go down to rock an issue. And it looks like Sola Fide, they are happy with that. They want to go ahead and take away some of the bigger competitors right now. Some of the bigger rivals in the lobby. As we have another fight going on in the south here. Standing on the chase. They'll get the knock on to Farmer Lucas as they want to go for more. But they can't drop down. They don't really have the option to get back up either. So this is a full commit for them if they do go down. And Sung will go in for it. They'll be able to finish that off. Pick up two points. But now they're stuck here on the low ground. They do have the port. We'll get them all the way up. We'll see in just a moment. Matt Pickett, Rakanishu, and Crummy here on the high ground controlling the zip as uh, they do have the Watson so they can go ahead and put a uh, trap there if they want to and close that one off. Perfect scenario here for you like that mate, but you do have Solafide getting aggressive onto their house and destroying a lot of these fences. There's the PK. It's going to connect for 66. A flank coming in through the bottom. That's going to be 165. That's set up into the house, so a completely different squad over here. Multiple teams 
within the vicinity, but the cat's cradle isn't gonna be enough as Klain is gonna drop to a double PK there as Burger Boy is gonna drop to Crummy. And you like that mate coming in with the swoop. I like this play, getting aggressive. They heard the shots, they left their spot. They know it's two good teams and they're going, gonna go use that kill feed to their advantage and press forward. And they are just controlling the entire zone right now. Each individual member taking a third party of their own, basically, as Rakanishu is controlling the high ground platform. We have the third party going on over to the Solafide fight on the northwest. What great map control. This high ground is a fantastic spot to be in. You can just defensive bombardment, bubble down. The only thing that could really stop that would be your own bubble play from down low. So I'm curious to see exactly how these guys are going to go and play this one, but they're all trapped in that little corner, Jamerson, you can see from the picture in picture. Yeah, and the only way up for them uh, is, of course, to use that zip, and uh, they think they might be able to try and get around from the other side. I don't really think that's an option at all whatsoever. They're trying their best to pop uh, whatever they can with the ultimate excels as well, to see if they can try and get maybe a portal here, but... This is just a great hold. They just can't overcommit onto this, right? Like, onto the zip. If they all have all three on there, you see the defensive of army getting ready, tossed out a little bit early here with uh, three seconds left to work with as the zone closes. Now they're going to go ahead and jump up top, bubble out instantly coming out from them. What a great play as we do have a full 3v3 fight in the last zone. Matt Pickett gets that first knock onto I'm Sung, but they're answering back. And wow. what did we make it? They execute perfectly on that plan, build the space, throw down the bubble, and they clutch that one out. Welcome back to Series E as we are already off the ship, heading into game number five on board here with THT. I'm hungry right now, so I'll say any one of the food partners is what they'll take. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, if if I were I, if I were one of the partners, I think I, I think if I were Rice Krispie treats, I'd pick them up because they snapped crackled and popped oh i apologize to nobody for that one nobody i apologize to no one early and oh my god he's getting charged down there we go turn around for the flank but he already got the knock Blurs. Is he going to be able to get out of this for free? It looks like he will. The rest of the squad is here. Kion is up top, but he gets knocked by naughty with an alternator of all things now but blur turns this around never mind it's flow rider Willingness, I guess, to just do whatever and meet like two Rams just butting heads there. So, looking at it's THT and what their fight is on the over, or uh, excuse me, on the tree side, we haven't seen them make this rotation out. We know that they land sorting, but it looks like they're going towards tree because it has to be pulling here. So, they're trying to do what they did in the geyser game and get some early positioning and bully these guys out. You can see the scan, you can see the minimap in the top left. That is going to be Tree. This is one of the best spots in Tree. Ooh. The other one is going to be on the west side. Big Thermite from Hill going to open up damage and give armors. Yeah, and I love how Hill controls the low ground with this. He can go right back on up. And when he wants to, one final tick on that. Some information to work with. They do have the Watson generator there, but it does not heal fast at all. As Hill is trying his best, he gets the knock on the fadeaway shot there. But... They are so low on HP. He's got the battery to work with. Will they be able to finish this fight out? There we go. Hidden for flesh. They got the knock onto hundreds, and now it's one final member left as they got the quick res up. And they'll be able to survive this for now. THT, this is a potential game winning play if they're able to lock this space down. As they want to punish this as much as possible you get the port right up onto the door and now he charges forward you see two knock people right in front of him 28 onto the purple misses a second shot tries to slow things down only hits for oh. a 70 but he will be able to finish it off with the help of his team a portal that he left his uh-oh cue the jaws <laughs> music it's rack and issue you like that mate picket crummy coming in with the crouch strategies oh they might have been heard they might have been heard Take a look, they're peeking out the doors right now. No, they don't know quite yet. So they're creeping up, it's a full three, man. They've got the Mastiffs out, they've got the guns out, ready for this, but they're detected. <laughs> it wasn't for the team inside, was it, though? I'm not oh, sure. Oh, here's an here EMP. an EMP. And that's not a friendly one, so they're gonna have to get out of here. Here comes the charge, all players pushing <laughs> into the bubble. It's gonna be E-Boy Ronnie, that's not even inside the team of the house. There's gonna be three teams involved in this fight. And all right, guys, 
The Counter-Strike crouching strategies don't work in Apex, it's confirmed. Oh boy, Solafide now charging out to clean up the rest of this fight. Uh, Muffins picks up one. There we go, Pride onto aim assist, Dracos. Areas where you're trying to find a spot when you're rotating from the thermal side and you come from that high ground bully position, you can just rotate right behind here and just wreak havoc on this team in the building and sometimes either win a fight or at least cause enough commotion where a third party comes in and ruins that moment for them. But this is where they got to stay disciplined. Can they win this fight? If they win this fight, is it going to be enough points for them to go and take first place here and then qualify for Series E? But they get the pull, Jamerson. The zone goes right towards the house. This is why we call this the God Spot, and that's why you see two teams splitting it. They're going to be able to hold everybody out here. Yeah, so you see at least uh, one squad there being trained on by Hill. He's even going to go ahead and toss out the defensive bombardment as he has another squad on the right. I'm surprised he didn't actually see them there. He's got to be careful. Again, it's his job, Hill. <laughs> That's so tragic. Leaf, by the way, I don't know why this place is called Tree. Leaf is blocking his entire defensive bombardment. All right, now Hill, again, having to hold it down on the right-hand side as Bowser finds a knock onto Stooney. There we go. They clean him up. They are picking up so many kills right now. Team Frog coming up huge yeah. now. Petty Boss Mini and Bowser. They're doing so much work. I don't remember exactly where they are in the standings, but with how many kill points they've got, there's a is there a chance that they can take first? I don't know, but they're charging head-on into this building like a bunch of... Thirsty zombies just smelling blood over here as Hill's wondering if anyone's going to come and try to help him here as three players making their way in and has to bubble, doesn't have the defensive bombardment, probably wishes that he did and great strategy here to throw the bubble down a couple grenades and force the teams on the outside to fight each other. You have the team in the back, you have another team probably playing over towards the high ground. So advantage on over to THT, but you see Petty Boss with a double knock over here, knocks on both sides. This is the opportunity they're going to push in now. And THC could win this. Yeah, they they see the trade. They know exactly how to end this one out. Hill gets knocked though. Petty Boss once again left by himself, but THT will clutch it all out. But is it enough? It should be. Yeah, no doubt about it. Getting those points is extremely important for your overall standings, but not just that. For your team's confidence, right? Coming through and saying like, hey, we can pull off a 15 kill, 20 kill game and still be extremely close to winning it. Maybe one or two massive shots over towards the end and they could have walked away victorious there. And uh, again, it's about the long haul. Like you said, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You got to continue to build this chemistry as a team. This is a new squad coming through and here having a great performance towards the tail end is going to do wonders for them as they go and practice and get ready for next week. And uh, we were talking in the last match, right? I'm Sung and uh, did we make it having clutch moments after clutch moments? This was also another one of those games where it was clutch moments after clutch moments. Hill uh, with some great massive shots here, closing it all out, getting this knock um, as he falls back, uh, really allows him to reset for this fight uh, for the eventual third party and then followed up by Teenage making this call out. Well, I don't know who made the call. I'm just gonna say it was the Wraith because he portals up for it to gain control of this building where ultimately this game ends. And so it was just a lot of great decisions, great clutch moments coming out from every member of THT here in game number five to close it all out. Yeah, and then this is the Crouch and Tiger fail and dragon strategy over here by you like that mate as they tried to make their way over towards the building. And I don't think I've ever seen that one before in Apex. All three players kind of just making their way over there. And that was the, uh, the portal play by, again, Hill and THT. Those guys had to take that spot jamerson there's no way you want to sit over here and have to deal with all this action like solafide had to deal with and when you go and make a play like that it's extremely risky but the reward is very high and that's what we saw happen from tht they understand the scenario they can't play it super safe anymore just like they did over towards sorting factory it's time for them to make the plays there's a reason they're sitting in the number one spot is because they've been executing on a high level. Let's go ahead and do those plays. Let's make those game-winning decisions and see how it pays off. Ended off paying huge dividends, and now they qualify for Series E.
Yeah, massive, massive plays coming out for them. Again, like we said, stumbled a little bit there. Game number three, game number four. Not the best for them, but starting off really strong, continuing to hold that lead, getting a smattering points here or there. Uh, we also have to give a shout out, of course, uh, to TSS and, uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, RKN's team, right? Um, they, they they put on a show. They put on a show for us in D. Flow Rider. It was typically <laughs> a slower a slower part of the game. But yeah, coming right back around full circle once again, taking a look at the highlights from game number five. It was THT to win it all out. And what a great way to do it. It's so important that Hill wins this fight. Otherwise, THT may not even win this thing this week. The fact that, again, he hits this fadeaway right here right at the perfect time. And you see team go in and take so much damage. They both escape with only a sliver of health. And it's such a difficult building to infiltrate because of the fact that you can get third partied so fast. It was Solafide waiting in the gates to go and get that one. Not only that, they had to deal with adversity where they had to make this portal play. They had multiple teams come and charge their building over towards the outside. They still executed it. And what a way to go, right? Not getting second or third place to secure way into Series E. Coming out on a dub. Just the way you started this thing has to feel good. And there it is, 77 points. But the big game by Frog will put them in second as well. Big game by Frog, big games by Sola Fide as well. Remember, while THT will be your second qualified team here for Series E, will be partnered with one of our nine partners up top uh, and representing them throughout the regular season. It's also a marathon. You want to try and accrue as many points as possible if you don't qualify by winning our qualifying tournaments. Th let's go ahead and take a look at the cumulative. We can go ahead and throw out THT. You guys already qualified. Get out of there. It's uh, We're looking at Zero Tricky, You Like That Mate, Frog, Solofide, and BFF. Those are our top five teams right now who are getting closer and closer. Two more weeks to go ahead and secure your spots for them. But take a look. Honestly, any number of these teams, if they have a good week, I could see them easily in the top five. No doubt about it. And a lot of these teams have been on former organizations, former pro players, still pro players, just not on organizations, trying to make their way, get signed, be on one of these teams here, and then be part of something that is going to be extremely competitive and fun. So not only can they grow as a team, but they can grow as an organization, go and try to, again, apply what they're learning here into the ALGS as well. So just a great overall system that we have here at Series E. But congratulations to THT. You no longer have to be a part of these overall points. You've already stamped your ticket in. And I wonder next if it could be Zara Tricky because of the fact that they've looked so good back-to-back -back weeks. All right, so are, are you going to stick with your original, uh, original um, I guess, assignment there? THT is going to be Team Pringles? I, I'm going for Team Pringles. <laughs> All right, I like it. I like it. What about Zero Tricky's team? Uh, team Zero Tricky, what would Ooh. they be? I feel like, hmm, I want to. It could be a Team Razor. I don't know. Team don't Razor, know. yeah. Maybe a Team they're, Intel. They're, 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 they could be sharp. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> all right. Well, anyways, thank you again to all of our Series E partners. Thank you to everyone at home for watching these games. And we also want to give a huge shout out to EA for partnering with us, helping us put this all on. And so thank you for honestly everyone involved for really supporting the Tier 2 scene, supporting the semi-pro scene. We're so glad that we're able to do this. Remember, the teams that do qualify, like we said, are going to be partnered with our nine partners, but they'll also be receiving a salary over the course of a three month season they'll be working with brands they'll be able to grow their own brands and learning a lot of stuff and so i think this is an important step for a lot of these players especially some who might not have that same kind of experience that's going to be it for us but we're going to be here back on the same channel same time next week for week three of the series e qualifiers make sure you don't miss out so you're following all of our social media stuff that's going to be at esports arena across instagram twitter and youtube that's going to go ahead and do it for us we'll see you guys next week and have a good night